If you know me, you know I love Brook Lighty's single malt scotch whiskey. And in fact, I'm even wearing the shirt that I picked up when I visited distillery last summer. Today, we're gonna to be talking about Brook Lighty's limited release range from 2023 for their peated expressions. We're talking about the Port Charlotte PMC01 and the Octomore 14.1, 0.2, and 0.3. My name is Matt, this is Whiskey on the West Coast. We're talking about Brook Lighty's peated single malt scotch whiskey today, the heavily peated Port Charlotte line, as well as the super heavily peated Octomore 14 series. Now, I'm gonna try and keep these as quick as possible because we're talking about four different single malt scotch whiskeys today. Uh, but if you want to go more in depth on Octomore, really find out what makes Octomore Octomore and what the differences are between the 0.1s, 2s, 3s, 4s, and the 10 year old releases, check out my Octomore Masterclass video after this. I'll have a link in the description down below for you to go ahead and find that video. I really love Octomore. In fact, recently I went ahead and I finally bottle killed this Octomore 9.1. It is one of the whiskeys featured in that video. Um, so yeah, check that out if you're interested. Also, if you're watching this video, let me know in the comments down below, number one, have you had any of these whiskeys and what you thought about them? But number two, um, if you were to buy one, what one would you lean towards personally, taking all factors into consideration? Let's get to the Port Charlotte Exploration Series PMC-01. The Port Charlotte PMC-01, I believe is the seventh entry into this cask exploration series from Port Charlotte and Brooklady. Usually it's just exploring what different uh, cask finishing or cask maturation types can do to the Port Charlotte spirit. This one was distilled in 2013, used use, uh, Scottish Concerto barley for its actual barley source. Brook Laddie tells us all these details. It's really wonderful. It was bottled in 2022. It's nine years old and bottled at cast strength, something that you see again throughout the entire cask exploration series. Cast strength, 54.5% ABV. It's non-chill filtered. It's natural colored. All these whiskeys on this table are, that's just a modern day Brook Laddie hallmark as well. It spent for cask maturation four years in first fill ex bourbon casks until 2017, when it was then moved over into Pomerol Bordeaux red wine casks for five more years of aging. Now it comes in, it's, it's heavily peated, it's 40 phenol parts per million, but it's using Scottish mainland peat as its peat source, not Isla peat. So it's a little bit different. It's $153 Canadian or 110 pounds at the distillery. All right, on the nose in this Brook Lottie Glen Karen I have here. It's it's nice, rounded, sweet, and slightly floral smoke. I'm actually surprised how floral this whiskey comes off. I'm wondering if that's a, a, a trait to the Pomerol cask. I do remember from my only other experience with Pomerol cask whiskeys was another Brook Lottie at the, the Beaumore Hotel on Isla. I'll, I'll say a little bit more about that one later, but I do remember the floral note being a common theme. It's a sweet nose, but it's balanced with that like savory, smoky character. I'd say like strawberry and like cantaloupe for the fruits on the nose. But it definitely has that like typical um, Port Charlotte meets red wine kind of barbecue note, like barbecue sauce, slathered meat on a grill or something like that nature. But again, still turns floral, and I'm actually really enjoying the floral kind of pretty nose on this. And there's definitely like um, a leathery note here too, earthy peat. But it's really sweet, and it's like sweet vanilla. Honestly, it's kind of going towards like, I don't know, like uh, flambéed whipped cream. Like it's a it's a weird thing to say, but really enjoy that. All right, on the palate. Okay, chili pepper on the outside of my tongue, like uh, grilled steak ends, like burnt ends, strawberries, leather, and like raisin prune character here. All really wonderful things that I like in a, a peated whiskey. I'm a peat head. I, I love these sorts of things. It's really sweet, but it's got really actually strong, grippy oak tannins as well. There's a lot of oak and wood influence in this. Good dose of smoke too on the finish. Uh, um, it's kind of gently rolling uh, now and and kind of coming to that like slow resolve. Um, the finish is really nice. Um, yeah, 
lovely billowing smoke on the finish. Another sip. Dessert tones, butterscotch, toffee, um, blackberry scones, or like scones with like blackberry uh, jam or something like that. Leather, a touch of tobacco. On the finish, a lingering pepper and spice, and again, those kind of like grippier, um, like tannin notes. It's, it's actually a lot more woody than I expected it to be. Um, but though the five years in those red wine casts probably really amped up the wood notes quite a bit. Really interesting whiskey, actually really quite enjoyable. And when I think back to my experience with Pomerol cask Brook Lotti, um, I had it uh, in a non-peated form, a 1989, 23-year-old Brook Lottie at the Beaumore Hotel. That was a, a Lions Tour 2013 Valanche. And that was like a mini black art release. I really loved it. It, it was it was a dead ringer for a black art release. Um, really wonderful, wonderful whiskey. And that what made me really excited about the Pomerol inclusion on this Port Charlotte. Really enjoying this whiskey. I'm gonna go ahead and save the score for now because I'm, I'm taste. I'm, I'm scoring off of um, samples here, which is always tricky. Take the scores with a grain of salt. I think what's gonna be more interesting is where they place in comparison to each other. So I'm gonna give you the ranking at the end of this video. Let's go ahead and move on to the Octomore 14.1. So what do you need to know about the Octomore 14.1? Well, start with, it was distilled in 2017, which is actually the same year that that Port Charlotte uh, PMC-01 was re-racked into those Pomerol red wine casks. When this 14.1 was distilled, they used Scottish mainland concerto barley from the 2016 harvest, and this was bottled in 2023, meaning it's five years old. It's quite a young whiskey in the grand scheme of, of, of single malt scotch whiskey. It is bottled to cast strength, 59.6% ABV, again, non-chill filtered, natural color. They use first fill ex-American whiskey casks, and it's peated to a whopping 128.9 phenol parts per million. It retails for about $276 Canadian, or 140 pounds at the distillery. All right, Octomore 14.1 on the nose. Oh yeah, okay, this is classic Octomore 0.1 profile. So right off the hop, hop here, we got like salted lemon rind, citrus, creamy butterscotch, caramel, toffee, vanilla, and a lovely like almond or marzipan note here. Yeah, that, that lemon is super bright. There's some coastal elements here too. Like a bit of sea breeze. The smoke is somehow subtle. It's subtle on the nose. And maybe I'm just, you know, peat blind because I, I, I love peated whiskeys. I love Octomore. Um, but it just doesn't come off as big initially when you start nosing this whiskey as you would imagine. Yeah, it's kind of under the surface, but give it time. Coastal, it's like the fire on the seashore, but like at a distance. Your ocean side, there's like crushed uh, like uh, crushed shells. And like um, the rockets, uh, chalk candies, you get in the little tube packs. Pete's starting to kick in a little bit more here, a bit more smoke. And a, just a slight touch cheesy, like a smoked Gouda sort of thing. All right, I waited in long enough, gonna take a sip. Ridiculously viscous, oily, mouth coating, lemon citrus, like boiled sweets, um, pears, pear drops. Oh man, nutmeg, butterscotch vanilla, all those sorts of lovely, again, fruit, kind of like orchard fruit, but like in, in sweet forms, like candied forms. And bam, like whack. Here's the peat, huge on the palate. Um, huge plumes of just of smoke, um, earthy, almost cheesy peat smoke going into billowing, wafting peat smoke on the finish right now. Leather, black pepper. Oh man. Wow. Yeah.
Mm. Yeah, after that initial just class and and really just elegance of that whiskey, you're just hit with this metric ton of peat and and it's and it's earthy, but yet somehow this peat smoke is extremely clean. It's 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 tight, yet it the finish just goes on forever it's so long this is a long dreamy smoked leathery wonder of a finish i I'm, i really dig this it reminds me so much of why i appreciate these point one releases there is sweetness on the finish too like butterscotch caramel these sorts of things um oh man yeah i i'd say it also reminds me of something of my youth um, if you ever had Captain Black's, uh, the vanilla tipped, uh, sweets, uh, cigars. So like they're vanilla tipped, uh, like mini cigars, uh, smoked them when I was a teenager at times, my miniature rebellion didn't last long, but the finish reminds me of that. And it even goes in the, on the long finish just now, a tiny bit industrial on the finish that this is, this is a classic example of a point one and exactly why I enjoy Octomore. Okay, again, saving that score and the ranking until the end. Let's move on to our point two wine cask influenced expression. We're going to move on to the 14.2. But guys, if you've liked what you've heard so far, you're enjoying the video, uh, consider uh, liking, sharing, uh, subscribing if you haven't already, and commenting down below again, just your thoughts on the video on these whiskeys. Again, if, they've, if you've had them or not. Really appreciate all the support, guys. And thank you so much to my Patreon subscribers who are supporting me in that way. It, it means an awful lot to me, so thank you. The Octomore 14.2. It was distilled again, 2017, from the 2016 harvest of Scottish mainland concerto barley. If that sounds familiar, it's exact same as the point one because they are using the same spirit run, which also means the phenol content is gonna be the same at 128.9 phenol parts per million PPMs. Now, this is five years old. Once again, it's bottled at a cast strength of 57.1% ABV. It's non-gel filtered, natural color. The cask makeup on this though is quite a lot more involved than the point one. Point one was straightforward, right? This is actually four years, 40% uh, of it is four years in Oloroso sherry casks. And then the other 60% is in Amarone, an Italian wine, uh, first fill wine casks, 16%, as well as uh, Amarone second fill wine cask, 44%. And then this entire parcel of whiskey is that it's finished for one year and Polyak wine casks. So really involved, but all about wine cask and sherry cask influence. Runs $286 Canadian uh, or 155 pounds at the distillery on the nose. The peat smoke is actually more present on the nose on this than it was on the point one. This is sweet, this is smoky, fruity, raspberry, bubbly water almost, if, you, if you're familiar with uh, bubbly. Cranberry cocktail with like, uh, a, it's like a cranberry based cocktail with the, you know, the smoke dome that, that they put over while they were smoking a cocktail. Um, if you've ever seen that at a bar, it looks pretty cool. That's what's kind of reminding me of just smoked cranberry cocktail. If there's a, a fire, if there's a campfire involved here, they're using cedar wood on that fire. Sour red fruits, strawberry, and honestly, yeah, dead ringer for like pomegranate, actually, 100%. This, there's pomegranate on this nose. Yeah, this is nice. Again, leathery peat smoke. There might even still be a slight floral note in this, kind of similar to that cask exploration series. I guess the similar trait here might be the inclusion of a lot of wine casks. Right at the end, really clear, bright, like Granny Smith apple. All right, palette. Hmm. Off the top, a lot of spice. Cinnamon, baking spice. It's almost like they've added spice on top of like an espresso roast, like a small espresso coffee dusted with cinnamon. Sweet barbecue. 
like um the type of barbecue you'd get on like um barbecue lays chips it's like a sweet barbecue instead of spicy though red fruits strawberries um wine gums if, if you're familiar with wine gums while the smoke was more present on the nose, I feel like it's actually been dulled a bit on the palate, which makes sense. I often find that with red wine casks or sherry casks, they'll kind of round out the, the smoke and, and make it appear much lower than it actually is. But this is still, I mean, hefty with the peat influence. Obviously it is Octomore, it is super heavily peated. There's a metric ton of peat smoke here, just in comparison to the point one, less so. Uh, yeah. With that cinnamon, there's also this pastry note. Um, it's reminding me of like an apple pie. So if we want like a, a smoked apple pie or apple pie with like smoked apples inside, really interesting. Um, the palette is actually quite a bit hotter and let's say spicier than the point one. So it's, that's a big difference there in kind of the presentation and styles and the way it comes off. Uh, but again, the smoke is actually again more prominent on the finish now. Um, it's almost like a long drag off of a, the end of a cigar, like a Cuban cigar, like the, the finish after that. That's what it's reminding me of right now. Really interesting. Oftentimes, I'm not as excited about the point two releases as the other ones. And one of my favorite point two releases recently was actually the So Turns point two release, the the 12.2 uh, from a couple uh, years ago. Uh, however, again, I'm going to save the scoring for this one at the end, but really interesting take on Octomore. And, and that, that's what's great about these point twos. They're always throwing you something new and something different and a different take on that Octomore profile. The last in our lineup of limited release, peated Brooklady releases for 2023 is the Octomore 14.3. It was distilled in 2017, much like these other Octomore releases, but unlike them, it was actually done on a separate spirit run. And that's because the point threes, their hallmark is that they're using 100% Isla grown barley. In this case, Concerto barley from the 2016 harvest harvested from Octomore farms, uh, which is owned by James Brown. And he's been quite involved in the Octomore process with the point threes for quite some time. It is the same age as these other two. Uh, being bottled in 2023, so five years old. Bottle of cast strength is 61.4% ABV, non-chill filtered, natural color. The cast makeup on this one though, is 50% first fill ex-bourbon casks and 50% second fill wine cask. It says FOC, I'm assuming that means French oak wine casks. Um, it's 214.2 phenol parts per million, quite a large jump from the other two releases here, which are in the, in the 120 range. It is also a large jump in price and cost. It is $357 Canadian or 195 pounds at the distillery. Okay. Octomore 14.3 on the nose is instantly incredibly coastal. Like there is so much salt and sea spray, sea breeze, it's coastal, salty, sea breeze wrapped up with peat smoke rising out of distant chimneys. Honestly, this this smells like Isla. When you're driving around on Isla, you, 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 when you're traveling, you'll smell peat smoke that's being burned uh, in, in the houses um, coming out of the chimneys. Like it, it, it honestly smells amazing and it smells just like this. That's gorgeous. That's naked, that's raw, that is elemental coastal Isla whiskey right there. Wow. What I will say though, this is the most subtle of all three on the peat influence. Again, I could be going peat blind here, but it is 214.2 phenol parts per million. So the peat's in there somewhere. And of course it does smell smoky, but the thing about Octomore is they just do such a great job with their cuts on these whiskeys that you get all the other notes as well as that smoke. It's not just drowned out. That's the real dance here. That's the impossible equation, if you will. It's just so salty. There's so much sea breeze in this. Under that, there's, there's lemon rind now. 
So that's a common theme with these Octomore releases when they're in X Bourbon. Yeah, the smoke's kicking into higher gear now. With a bit more air, a bit more time uh, sloshing around this glass. Vanilla, pear, apple, and honey, and maybe graham cracker too. All right, on the palate. Boom. There it is. Salty smoke bomb with fruit salad on the side. And <laughs> maybe a Werther's original candy to finish it. Um, yeah. Wow. Okay. So salty smoke. Again, that, that, the, the fruitiness of the citrus, of the pear. Yeah, pear drops. Butterscotch, caramel, toffee. Oh, man. What a whiskey. Mm. You feel the ABV for a moment, and then you're overwhelmed with all these flavors. Ah, just a rush of flavors, and it just speeds you away from any sort of prickle you're, you're feeling. Again, honey, the pear drops, lemon wedge. The smoke is earthy, it's leathery. And a little bit floral, almost heathery towards the end here. Salted caramel, incredibly coastal. Like my my lips feel salty drinking this. This is this is friggin' good. Wow, if you want a coastal, heavily peated whiskey, this is unreal. Finish now. It's earthy, coastal, and still slightly floral smoke at the moment. Finish is going on. It, if I just let it roll right now it would roll for minutes uh, you know five to ten you'll be tasting this for a really long time one more sip yeah sweet candied ginger along with really clear and bright barley malt note so the grains coming through there, that that Octomore Farms, Isla grown, 100% Isla, Concerto Barley. Just bravo. This is why I love these 0.3 releases. They are so incredibly unique and incredibly Isla. This is Isla in an ent elemental form, bottled up for our enjoyment. Honestly, it's just, it's, 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 it's wonderful stuff. I really am enjoying the 14.3. At this point in the video, you're definitely wondering, okay, what scores are these whiskeys gonna have and where do they rank against each other? So that's exactly what we're gonna do right now. So my fourth place finisher is gonna be the Octomore 14.2. And that's not because it's not a good whiskey, but in comparison to these other whiskeys, it's just, it's a tough competition here. I found it a, 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 quite a bit hotter than the other whiskeys, a, a bit spicy and a touch bit acidic, um, which I find oftentimes Weirdly enough, with Amarone wine cask finishes, I found that with the Aaron Amarone uh, release as well. Um, it doesn't really match my profile all that well, but I still love that it was a different take on the Octomore profile. And that's what these point twos are great for. So really interesting whiskey, definitely worth trying, uh, but not my favorite on the night. I would give this probably a score of 86 out of 100, but again, that's a sample score. So a wee tiny grain of malt, let's say, uh, in, in with that score. 86 out of 100, fourth place finisher, the 14.2. Third place on this day is gonna be the Port Charlotte Exploration Series PMC01. And it's not because I didn't find it interesting or enjoyable. I actually, I, I really did. I love the tannic structure. Uh, if you don't like woody or oaky whiskeys, you might not like this. I, I think that the, the whole point of the cask exploration series is to bring these different looks and different, different takes on Port Charlotte. I do think it, it did show more maturity on its profile than these Octomore releases. So really great in that way. But I, I just lost some of that Port Charlotte DNA and what makes Port Charlotte Port Charlotte. Um, again, I was excited to have another crack at a Pomerol cask influenced Brook Laddie product. 
it's just up against really stiff competition here, in, in all honesty. I was kind of hoping it would come out on top. Uh, if I had a, a bias, that's where I was hoping it would wind up. But it's third place in this ranking tonight. If I had to give it a score, it's about 87 out of 100. Now, that said, it is by far the least expensive whiskey on this table. And if we're taking value into full consideration here, honestly, the PMC01 would be first if you're including value. Because it's just, it is actually a really good whiskey. Again, the Octomore 14.1 and 0.3 were just that notch above them. Next up, second place. Second place on this night. Oh man, I waffled back and forth on these. Honestly, these are a statistical tie for me. I both scored them the same at 90 out of 100. And I'm going to say that first place and second place. Well, now it's first place. First place is going to be the Octomore 14.1. Why? Look, such class, measure, and restraint. It's a, a, a pretty lovely, super heavily peated single malt scotch whiskey i mean it, it, it's, it's this beautiful whiskey that wields this hammer of smoke and again it is a classic example of a 0.1 release it, it, it's this comfort zone with octomore i mean the, the most recent bottle kill for octomore as i mentioned at the beginning of this video was a 9.1 i'm just at home with that profile oftentimes my favorites are the 0.3s and the second place finisher tonight was that 14.3 and it came so so close to taking first spot uh, again it is isla in an elemental form in a bottle it's just it's it's so salty it's so coastal but it didn't have the the fruits and the dessert tones on the same level as is point one i'm not sure if that's up to the 50 percent inclusion of second fill red wine casks maybe they didn't give that um point three profile that i really do love and look for where it's just it feels like the barley is on full display it was still a kind of a, a more naked approach, which is why I really appreciate it still. Again, the just salt and, and coastal vibes for days. Honestly, it's like I said, it's a statistical tie. But on this night, I would be going with the 14.1 as my first place finisher. Um, it's just a marvelous example of the 0.1 Octomore profile. Thank you so much for sticking with me through this entire 2023 peated range of Brook Laddie. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know in the comments what you thought of it. And I hope you come back for more again in the future. Until next time, I'm going to lift up this winning Octomore 14.1 from the West Coast. Slunge. <laughs>